1972, Kawasaki didn't pull any punches in the brochure for the new H2 Mark IV 750 triple. They said, we've just pulled a fast one on the competition. Of all the world's production models, it's the fastest thing on two wheels. They really weren't exaggerating. The H2 is designed for one thing, and one thing only, speed. Noise, pollution, fuel consumption, and even handling were all secondary. Its predecessor, the 500cc H1 Mark III triple, set the benchmark for road bike performance. But the early 1970s were a numbers game, and the key number was 750. Everyone had to have a 750 superbike in their range. Norton had the Commando, Ducati had the 750 SS, and of course there was the Honda CB750. But when Kawasaki entered the race with the Mark IV, they tore up the rule book and the tarmac together with it. Because it wasn't just the fastest two-stroke, it was the fastest accelerating bike. Seventeen, the bikes that we rode were two strokes. I mean, they were, you know, FS one E's, and I had a Malaguti Monte. It's a fifty cc two stroke. Two strokes are in our blood and they're in our nostrils. And you know, when you progress onto the bigger bikes, a seven fifty two stroke is, you know, it's nuts. A seven fifty version of what we had when we were seventeen. Loads of torque, loads of power. Loads of aggravation. I mean, the things, you know, they put this enormously powerful engine into a bike which wasn't, really wasn't ready for it. Um, I mean, the cycle parts on this aren't an awful lot different to a 250, and yet you've got a load more power. As well as the frames being fairly inadequate for the power that these bikes had, the tyre technology back then was pretty basic as well. This one is actually, this is a fabulous bike. It's completely unrestored, uh, 10,000 miles from new. It's still got, amazingly, it's still got its original front tyre. I doubt if the back tyre is original. Most of those miles were probably done with the front wheel in the air, so that's why it's managed to survive. So you've got to treat it with respect because not only is that an original Japanese tyre, but it's now a very old Japanese tyre. Compared to, let's say, the Z1, a little bit later, we would, most of us gravitated towards four-cylinder four-strokes. They're sophisticated, they're much better mannered. I mean, they're still, the, the Z1 Kawasaki is, is still a beast of a machine, but it's a lot, lot more civilised and a lot more usable. And you could go places on it. I mean, to be perfectly honest with you, if you, you know, these are a lot of fun on a shorter, a shorter ride, but if you wanted to do 50, 60 miles or more, you're going to get on a Z1 Kawasaki every day over an H2. But I think the key thing with these H2s, apart from all those other things, is the oral and the nasal nostalgia. Nostrils full of two-stroke and the noise of a two-stroke triple-cylinder bike is uh, it's, it's a unique experience. In many ways, the Kawasaki H2 is the essence of the pure, unadulterated superbike concept. It's about exhilaration and performance with very little else allowed to interfere. It's also a motorcycle that for some was a lot safer to look at than to get on. Whilst they tried to make it easier to handle as it evolved, it was still a machine to take very seriously and demanded razor sharp reactions from a rider that knew what they were doing. A rider that was most likely a mustachioed, leather jacket wearing, hairy chested chain smoker, just like the bike. <laughs> <laughs> 